Hey there guys, part two of my project now, welcome back. So I can make up and fabricate parts myself, I've bought myself a welder. It's a Clark MIG 151TE, there you can see it there. And uh, it's just got one of those hobby CO2 canisters on the back uh, with the pressure regulator that came with it. Uh, it's just a hobby level one, so it's not anything too ex expensive. I think I paid about £300 for everything. Uh, here's the torch. It's not a Euro torch, but it's quite small. Uh, so I'm able to get it into the tight places so I can make everything up. So here's a, a new fuel tank that I've already started to modify. Um, here's the original one, you can see it's it's quite rusty already. Um, I'm not sure if you can see inside, but there's, there's loads of rust and loads of crap in there. So I decided to get a new one. I'm going to have a in-tank fuel pump, uh, so that's what this top hat here is for. Um, so that's why I've cut out this larger hole and I've just balanced and tacked these bolts in place for now. Uh, and then I'll be connecting that onto the bottom there. Uh, so here was, this is what I was talking about last time, I've made up a small diamond plate um, if it will focus you can see that I've just tacked it on there and then ground it flat so I'll be able to mount that at 90 degrees now see if you can get a better look at that it's not perfect but it should do the job I've put a uh, layer of oil resistant RTV in the middle there and I'll use a bit more when I uh, put it back together So to make up the coolant system, I've got a load of spare bits like these, and I've also bought um, some aluminium pipes with beaded ends, because I'm going to have the radiator up the front. And you can see I've got several different sizes there. And I've also bought some of this flexi pipe. It's quite bendy, um, but I'll probably need some right angles to get in the really tight places. You can see it's quite thick, um, seems quite strong, so I'll be happy with this running underneath the car. So I've got my engine hanging up here now, and you can probably see around the dipstick that I've taken off the small bracket. I'm hoping it won't really make much of a difference. Um, but it was in the way for the the subframe that I'm making up. And looking underneath, you can see the mounting points that I'm going to be using the original uh, engine mount holes, uh, the the two shiny bolt holes. So I'm not going to be using uh, rubber mounts. Uh, there's not really much room underneath. So here's the subframe that I've made up, and you can see it's, like I said, solid mounted. The welds aren't the prettiest, but they're, they're pretty strong. It's quite heavy, it weigh, weighs about 15 kilos now. I've made the whole thing out of this 4mm box. So it should be quite strong. Here it is taking the full weight of the engine now. Um, so I've got the car roughly where it will be sitting on at ride height as well. So this gives you a real idea. And then you can see, like I said, I've uh, got the solid mounted subframe on there and if I move around you can see that I've got the, the adapter plate there and the original starter motor 
Um, I'll need to rebuild that gearbox as it's leaking a bit of oil there. Yeah, so you can see I've got about six inches of ground clearance there. Hopefully that won't be too much of an issue. Um, I have thought about cutting the sump to flatten it on the bottom, but I'll see how I go and just be careful around bumps and stuff. So you can see there the gap that I've had to squeeze through between the filter and the sump. Uh, and here's just a, a view from above. Uh, this is one of the reasons why I've decided to go solid mount because um, I don't want the engine moving around too much because uh, I'm worried that it will just sort of bang into the side of things because um, it's quite a tight fit on the sides here especially with the coolant pipes so this is the uh, the in-tank fuel pump that I'm going with I'm um, going to go in-tank to avoid overheating issues and then I don't have to worry about having to mount it underneath the car um, and worry about vibrations so I'll be mounting that on back onto the top hat and putting that in the original tank well the new one so here I've got a, a freshly manufactured um, high performance clutch you can see even the bearing is is quite chunky um, quite a bit thicker than the original one so it can take a lot more pressure just move this off the top and you can see I've got a, a Kevlar plate there uh, can take a lot more clamping pressure than a, an organic clutch and got a slotted uh, pressure plate there so I bought these offline uh, they were quite cheap they're called bus bars um, so I'll be able to use these when I'm doing the wiring um, it'll just hopefully make things a bit simpler so I'm going to use one for uh, permanent power and one for switched thanks for watching guys don't forget to subscribe to keep up to date with my project